It's the Bulls Show, aka Aiden, and welcome back to another video. Ladies and gentlemen, today we've got the Chicago Bulls and San Antonio Spurs game reaction in which the Chicago Bulls kind of saw firsthand exactly what I was talking about in the last video, their offensive firepower in the San Antonio Spurs. Their ball movement was too tough to handle, and ultimately, of course, they got a couple of calls their way, but the Chicago Bulls end up losing this game to the San Antonio Spurs. We may have fell right into the trap, but ultimately, San Antonio has had a great season thus far maybe it's not necessarily a trap game maybe we just lost to the better team tonight on this night but before we get started please like and subscribe to the bull show turn notifications on and let me know in the comments below your thoughts about the overall game today who was your player of the game your overall thoughts and opinions on how the game went we lost this game 129 to 124 i'm not gonna lie this type of loss definitely hurts because you were so close to getting the victory i think for the most part the bulls actually could controlled the game very well of course the Spurs came back from their three-point shots their ball movement sometimes they had some good defensive possessions as well but San Antonio in terms of the statistical side they had a lot more turnovers than the Chicago Bulls we had a lot more bench points we had a lot more second chance points again I think everything turned in our favor but the Bulls just simply could not get the job done today so fair play to the San Antonio Spurs again this is the game where it's a tough game very very difficult game to overcome it's in San Antonio we don't normally beat the San Antonio Spurs and I've been saying it for a while they cause us problems based on their system alone and it's very very frustrating that we walked away with the loss considering we were up for most of this game but that's the NBA sometimes ladies and gentlemen and we've kind of got a lot to get through but before I do congratulations to DeMar DeRozan on making 20,000 career points in his NBA career very classy move by uh, Greg Popovich to time out to get DeMar DeRozan his time to celebrate for the Spurs fans to give him the standing ovation as a former Spurs player as well and yeah very very classy stuff from Greg Popovich and very classy stuff from the San Antonio Spurs organization and fans and I kind of knew this was coming they are a very classy organization at the end of the day so fair play and obviously congratulations to DeMar DeRozan the 50th player in NBA history to do it very very unique number there as well all I can say is, again, what a terrific player DeMar DeRozan has been throughout the course of his career. And he had another solid night tonight with 33 points in this game. But with all that being said, we still lost the game. I would have loved to walk away with the win on this big night for DeMar DeRozan, but we lost the game. And how did we lose the game? Well... I don't think the third quarter helped very well. Again, I think our starters really need to look themselves in the mirror and we'll figure out why they're the ones that are giving up these leads, why they're the ones that are kind of costing us the game because it's no secret now that the bench has been carrying the Chicago Bulls this season. I think every single game except for the Pacers, every time the starters are on, the Bulls struggle, the Bulls don't do well, the Bulls concede leads, the Bulls let teams go on runs and it's the exact same way it happened in today's game. Yes, yeah, statistically, DeMar DeRozan was fantastic. Guys like Iowa played very, very well. Uh, even guys like Patrick Williams played very, very good basketball today as well. But there has to be a reason, and I don't know what it is. I personally can't figure it out. A lot of people turn to Patrick Williams, but when Patrick Williams is playing well, we're still committing the same issues that we have. So it can't just be Patrick Williams. It can't just be Ayo. It can't just be Vucevic. It can't just be one single guy in the starting lineup. It can't even be Zach Levine not being out. We need to figure out why these players, or I guess the starting lineup, is struggling so much. And I think that's a big step for our season. If we can finally, I guess, resolve those issues of the San Antonio Spurs players amongst other teams as well, going out to big leads, and I guess really having strong first quarters against us, we might be able to win these types of games. That is very tough. It is very gritty. Very, very scrappy. It's a fight at the end of the day, this type of game. Uh, the San Antonio Spurs, Spurs fought like hell to win the game, and we fought like hell to try and keep the lead. I have no problems losing this type of game, except, of course, the frustration of knowing you could have won. But it's a tough game, and we walked away with the loss. It happens. But I just want to know, especially from the starting line's perspective, what is it that makes us so slow in the first quarter? And even in the third quarter as well, when we come back into the second half, when we play the same starting lineup, is there a change that needs to be made? I don't know, but I hope Billy Donovan can figure it out. That's one of those questions that maybe we don't know the answer to, but Billy Donovan needs to figure it out. Also, let's talk about the fourth quarter and stuff like that. 
Obviously, uh, the San Antonio Spurs took the lead in the fourth quarter, and they kind of never looked back on that situation. They managed the game very well. San Antonio is a very good offensive team. They've been so for the last five games, six games now, and they improve and they continue to be a good offensive team. Their three-point shooting was fantastic. Their ball movement, Jakob Podol had a great game as the center for the San Antonio Spurs. Again, they deserved the win just based on, I guess, how good their shooting was, and the ball shooting just could not match it. We did not shoot well from the three-point line. All of our points came from in the paint. Yes, we had a lot more, I guess, scoring opportunities in terms of the paint. We had more second chance opportunities. Again, we had more rebounds, bench opportunities. Everything like that was in our favor. We had less turnovers and everything was like that was also in our favor. But sometimes three-point shooting really can be the difference in the game. And San Antonio shot better from the three-point line. So they walk away with the win. Obviously, as well, it's great to see Ayo Dosumu get back on the court after his head injury. Obviously, when dribbling down to, I guess, drive to the basket, he slips, hits, I think, Calvin Johnson's knee. Unfortunate um, accident, I guess you could say. There was no hard play there. There was no, I guess, anything on purpose. It was just a really, really bad accident. And thankfully, Ayo Dosumu is okay. And obviously, thankfully, Andre Drummond is okay as well because he had a very nasty fall in the game. Uh, I thought, again, the way that he was reacting, I thought he wasn't going to play. I thought he got injured. But thankfully, he played the game. And my goodness, was he fantastic in this game as well. So, all together, we got to pick ourselves up, dust ourselves off. We seem to never beat the Spurs in San Antonio, at least in the last two years we haven't. And it's not going to change now. Let's just say I'm very thankful we're not versing the Spurs four times a year. Even though they don't have the best quality players even though a lot of people even now still expect them to be a rebuilding team they always gives the Chicago Bulls problems every single year without fail they give the Chicago Bulls problems for all those people saying it was an easy game easy win we fell into that trap and we walked away with the loss so congratulations to the Spurs nonetheless uh, I do want to kind of talk about a few things before I obviously go to the must improve in the player of the game type situations um, our bench, I want to give another shout out to this bench. I thought our bench really carried the Chicago Bulls today. Again, our starting lineup, look, the stats might show that they did fine. And for the most part, they did okay. But the bench, I think that in one stage of the game, the bench outscored our starters. I'm not sure if that's how it ended because DeMar obviously had 33 on his own. But this bench has been so solid all the way around. Kobe White had a great game today with 19 points and four rebounds alongside four assists. Uh, obviously, Andre Drummond with a 17 and 14 night. What a great game from Andre Drummond. Goran Drogic with a nine point and five assist performance alongside of three rebounds. Derry Jones Jr. came in with six points as well. This bench has been absolutely amazing and I can't fault the bench for how we play today. As soon as the bench unit came on, as soon as that specific lineup comes on, the whole game changed. So again, very, very happy with this bench. I think the starters and I think some of the other guys that maybe is not part of that bench unit that comes on, they really need to look at themselves and find out how they can change and I guess make sure we're not falling so bad in deficits anymore, especially in the start of the game. The start of the game could be very important towards the rest of the game as well. You actually have a lead in this game, and then the bench unit comes on and provides that energy. We can go to 20, 25 point deficit uh, to leads. We saw that against the Pacers, but we have to figure that out. I think that's a big part of our problem. We have to figure it out. The Bulls have to figure it out. Let's go into the must improve. Uh, I'm going to pick Nikola Vucevic. Again, I think this is a very easy decision. Very, very rough night from Nikola Vucevic. Now, I tried my absolute best to avoid any criticism of Nikola Vucevic because at the end of the day, he's doing a lot of the things that we've, uh, we've been asking for as Chicago Bulls fans. Getting into the paint, getting into the post, trying to grab offensive rebounds, and just being a nuisance in the paint, just like Andre Drummond was in today's game. But unfortunately, uh, I don't know what it is between Vucevic and Jakopodl, but Jakopodl seems to own Vucevic every single time he they end up playing with each other Vucevic did not have a great game in tonight's game I don't know the reason why I hope he could do better against Philadelphia we will need him against Philadelphia as well and considering he is the second scoring option in this type of game with no Zach Levine it kind of hurts to see your second scoring option score five points with only two rebounds in the game alongside of a block as well not a very good performance from Nikola Vucevic I personally disagreed with the fact that Billy Donovan brought him back on you could clearly see Andre Drummond was the guy to go to in that game and the fact that they, he brought Vucevic on I really disagree with the coaching staff for making that decision I understand it's a confidence thing you don't want Vucevic to have a really bad stretch of confidence but 
Andre Drummond was the way to go in this game. I think everybody can see it. The guy had 17 points and 13 rebounds off of our bench. No matter who was he was guarding, he did it very well. Obviously, eventually, he brought Andre Drummond back on. But at the end of the day, it is what it is. I think by then, um, Spurs had all that momentum. So, yeah. Very, very tough game from Vucevic. We're going to need him in our back-to-back -back against Philadelphia. I'll obviously give the player of the game to DeMar DeRozan. Shout-out to Andre Drummond for a great night. Shout-out to Kobe White for a great night. Unfortunate that those efforts went to waste in this game. And obviously, it went to waste that DeMar DeRozan scored his 20,000th point, and we did not walk away with the win. So... The next game becomes very, very important there, ladies and gentlemen. DeMar DeRozan was very solid scoring-wise. He needs to do better assist-wise. He needs to do better in terms of rebounding as well. Defensively, he wasn't very great. But the fact of the matter is, when we needed offense, DeMar DeRozan was the guy to go to. Extremely efficient once again. I would consider giving him the player of the game. If not, I would very much consider Andre Jarman the player of the game as well. Those two guys were really the big guys in this game. The Bulls record is 3-3. Three and three. Back to 500, ladies and gentlemen. Again, I, I've said this in a comment. I can't remember to which video. I can see the Bulls throughout this stretch of games, especially in the early past, going at a 500 level just because of the inconsistent performances that we may see and obviously the challenges and the good teams we have faced. But one thing to note, the teams that we're so-called so expected to beat are the teams that we're losing to. We're expected to beat the Washington Wizards. That's the team that we lost to. We were kind of expected in the home opener to beat the Cavs, and obviously we got humiliated there as well. And then this game against the San Antonio Spurs, I think everybody thought the Bulls were expected to win this game, and the Bulls walked away with the loss. We beat Boston. No one expected us to beat Boston. We beat Miami. No one expected us to beat Miami. So again, there are a lot of teams there that we've beaten that we probably shouldn't have, and vice versa. So... It's an interesting old season. It's an interesting old problem. Now we have to focus about how the Bulls can beat the bad teams, which again, I don't consider Spurs a bad team, but I think most people expected us to win this game. Our next game is against Philadelphia. Um, I'm not sure what Philadelphia team we're going to be seeing. I think they also played a back-to-back -back in Toronto today. Correct me if I'm wrong. And Joel Embiid did not play this game because of a right knee injury. So... I'm assuming if it's a major injury, he'll be out against the Chicago Bulls. I, th I think we'll have to wait and see in terms of that situation. And also, I guess um, they are a team that's kind of struggling as well. So with Zach Levine probably playing this game, hopefully we'll have a better time. Uh, I kind of want Joel Embiid to play just so we can beat this whole curse of Joel Embiid has never lost to the Chicago Bulls. I don't want that to be a running theme in the NBA for future years. But at the end of the day, uh, in this league, you have to play what's put in front of you. Uh, obviously, the Spurs didn't have their best team either. You've got to give them credit for playing the way that they played without their best lineup. Obviously, they waived the player as well um, before this game started. So, yeah, interesting times for the NBA, I guess you could say. But with Philadelphia, uh, again, they, they, they've been struggling recently. I think they may have won today. Again, I don't, I don't actually know the score. But, yeah. Without Joel Embiid, we have to beat what's put in front of us. With Joel Embiid, I want us to still perform and hopefully walk away with a win at home off of a back-to-back. -back. They also have a back-to-back -back as well. So we're on an even playing field here. No excuses if we lose to Philly. So thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe if you're new. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed the video. Have a wonderful and safe day, Bulls Nation. I'll see you in another Chicago Bulls video. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay tuned for more. Take care and peace.